Hello everybody, this is Renee, and Tom and I are on the Ultimate World Cruise, and we just docked in China. This is the first time Tom and I have ever been to China. There was a lot of press ready to greet us. The port welcomed us with a vibrant display of local culture. If anybody knows what words they are spelling here, please let me know. We were accompanied by the curious sight of at least five drones hovering around the ship, capturing the footage of the dancers in action. We waited for our excursion number to be called, and we exited the ship to be greeted by more press. We were given free candy and towelettes. Once we exited the port, we found our bus and settled in for the long ride to lunch. Okay, Is this the first time you come to China? Yes. The ride would take approximately an hour and a half. On our way to lunch, our guide provided us with an insightful knowledge about China and the Forbidden City. Halfway there, we stopped at this local rest area, and this would be the last time our guide said that we would have good restrooms, except for at the hotel for lunch and dinner. So after a quick pit stop at the rest area, we headed to the hotel for a delicious lunch. When we arrived at the hotel, they had a stunning dining area set up for us. And guess what? We got to try our hand at eating with chopsticks. Doing the Lazy Susan send around with all of our table mates. And for lunch, it looks like we're going to have stewed beef brisket, kung pao chicken, sweet and sour pork, sautéed sliced duck and soy sauce, green beans, sautéed potato green peppers, more vegetables, and chicken soup. I actually tried the food and it was pretty good. So then we got back on the bus and drove the next two hours. We did not get out of the bus, but we slowed down as we passed Tiananmen Square. Tiananmen Square holds immense historical significance in China. It was built in 1651 during the Ming Dynasty. It has since witnessed numerous pivotal moments in Chinese history. Tiananmen Square is perhaps most widely known for the 1989 pro-democracy protests and subsequent military crackdown, which left a lasting impact on both China's domestic policies and international relations. Tiananmen Square is approximately a half mile away from the Forbidden City, so we got off the bus and took a short walk to the entrance. The Forbidden City, also known as the Palace Museum, is a vast imperial palace complex that served as a residence of the Chinese emperors for nearly 500 years. The first resident was from the Ming Dynasty in 1368. Its name, Forbidden City, comes from the fact that the access to the palace was strictly controlled and ordinary citizens were forbidden from entering without permission. It was the home of 24 emperors. Throughout its history, the Forbidden City witnessed numerous political and cultural events. It also served as the seat of government, where emperors held court, issues decreed, and received foreign dignitaries. In 1925, it was open to the public and allowed visitors to explore its magnificent halls, galleries, and treasures. Today, it's one of the most visited tourist attractions in China, attracting millions of visitors from around the world to come marvel at its beauty, history, and cultural significance. The Forbidden City is comprised of over 980 buildings, including halls, pavilions, and courtyards. We just saw a tiny portion of this massive complex. The construction of the Forbidden City was an immense undertaking that required a vast workforce consisting of tens of thousands of laborers, craftsmen, and artisans. It is estimated that it took over one million workers to build the Forbidden City over a period of 14 years, from 1406 to 1420 during the Ming Dynasty. Each of these buildings served a specific purpose the Grand Hall, which was the ceremonial center of the Forbidden City and served as a venue for important state occasions, such as the imperial coronations and court assemblies. The Hall of Central Harmony was located between the Hall of Supreme Harmony and the Hall of Preserving Harmony. This building was used by the emperor for final preparations before important ceremonies. It also served as a resting place during processions. The Hall of Preserving Harmony was used for rehearsals and preparations before ceremonial events. It also served as a venue for imperial banquets and feasts. The Palace of Heavenly Purity was the residence of the Emperor and the Empress within the Forbidden City. It consisted of various halls and chambers where the imperial family lived, slept, and conducted private affairs. The Hall of Mental Cultivation served as a private residence and a study of the Emperor. This is where the Emperor conducted state affairs, received officials, and made important decisions. The Hall of Union was used for important ceremonial rituals such as the Emperor's wedding ceremony and announcement of imperial edicts. 
It symbolized the harmony and unity of the imperial family. The Palace of Earthly Tranquility was the residence of the Empress and served as the center of the imperial harem. It consisted of several chambers and courtyards where the Empress and her attendants lived and conducted daily activities. There was also a hall of military eminence, and this hall was used for military ceremonies such as the Emperor's inspection of the troops and bestowing of military honors. It also housed weapons, armor, and military equipment used by the Imperial Army. The Pavilion of Literacy Profundity was used for scholarly pursuits and intellectual activities such as poetry readings, calligraphy exhibits, and academic discussions. The garden within the Forbidden City is also known as the Imperial Garden and it covers 12 acres. The Gate of Harmony was the main entrance to the Forbidden City and served as a ceremonial gateway for important events. It was guarded by the Imperial soldiers and was only opened for special occasions. Following our captivating exploration of the Forbidden City, we got on a bus for a two-hour ride to a restaurant near the majestic Great Wall of China. This building is the National Art Museum of China. The landscape changed pretty quickly and then suddenly we were upon part of the wall. The Great Wall of China was built over 2,000 years ago and spans thousands of miles across northern China. It features imposing watchtowers, fortified ramparts, and strategic passes. The Great Wall served as a formidable barrier protecting China's borders and safeguarding its people. From the rugged mountains to the restored sections, each part of the Great Wall tells a story of China's rich history and cultural heritage. The next place we stopped was at a hotel for a special dinner. This hotel was set against the backdrop of the majestic Great Wall of China. We were immediately served with coker water and sat down to a delicious dinner. There were squirrels on every table, we're just not sure what they were meant for. Once again, we did the Lazy Susan turntable to see all of our table mates. We enjoyed a family-style meal, passing around the dishes to sample together. Afterward, we embarked on another brief bus ride to the Great Wall of China. To our surprise, this section hasn't been accessible to the public at night since President Obama's visit in 2009. We felt incredibly fortunate as it was exclusively open for our group, making the experience truly fabulous. So they were the first enemy we had of the grassland people. So that's three small kingdoms in the north part, north part of China. They started to build the, the wall surrounding their own territories. Uh, in 221 BC, we had the first emperor. He defeated other six kingdoms and united China like one country. He had a very strong military power, but still Chinese people could not compete with the nomadic people because they travel on the back of horses and they were easy to make bigger than them. So the, the first emperor, he ordered one of his generals just to link up the Great Wall, built originally by those small nations in the north. So that general used one million people, think about 2,000 years ago, one million people and 10 years just to link up the Great Wall. And it was said that the emperor used another Million, one million people to build his tool. So that is the very first, very famous one. If you heard about the terracotta soldiers, yes, that was for the same guy. That was for the same guy. So at that time, that was the first time we had one great wall running from east to the back. And then mm, this dynasty didn't really last for a very long time. Only two emperors, and then they finished. The very quickly, then we, we came to Han Dynasty. We call ourselves Han people, right? We are Han, the majority of Chinese. So we had very strong military power, and somehow the emperor still ordered the general to 
to extend the Great Wall. And then the part of the reason was because the very famous Silk Road in China, in Chinese territory, was protected by the, by the Great Wall. So they were running within the Great Wall. So basically the Great Wall at that time uh, went from the sea, from the eastern sea, all the way to the Gobi Desert, to the Gobi Desert. So, and then uh, the last big scale construction happened after we kicked the Mongols to Russell. So we were worried that they come back to uh, mainland China again. So one thing we buried in their palace. Remember outside of Forbidden City, there was a man-made artificial hill. And so one of the things we did was bury their palace. Secondly, we had the, mirror, uh, the generals did a big construction on the Great Wall. So uh, the Great Wall somehow really protect the Chinese civilization. And that is one of the reasons why the Chinese civilization lasted and didn't really got interrupted too much. This was truly an epic adventure as we explored the Great Wall of China after dark. One of the most striking aspects of exploring the Great Wall at night is just how steep it is. There was a sense of awe and wonder as we were walking on the wall. The towering ramparts and rugged terrain tested our endurance as we navigated this ancient fortification under the cover of darkness. It was truly a surreal experience. With each step, you can't help but feel a sense of awe and reverence for the monumental feat of engineering and the countless lives that have crossed these same paths throughout history. Standing on top the Great Wall, surrounded by centuries of history and culture, you can't help but feel a profound connection to the past and a sense of wonder at the enduring legacy of this iconic landmark. Navigating the Great Wall at night is an experience unlike any other. As we left this world wonder, we got back on the bus and had some snacks and had a three-hour ride back to the port. We returned to the ship around midnight. It was a fabulous day. If you enjoy traveling with us, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, and if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe for more exciting adventures. See you at the next port.